I caught up with the founder of Atmosphere, one day at Dilemo, and I started by asking him why broadband penetration is still low. Broadband is the precursor to innovation. Without broadband, uh, we just have internet access, everybody crawls, everybody draws, it's too expensive, you really can't innovate, things can happen as fast as they should. But with broadband, on the other hand, innovation begins to take off in leaps and bounds. And you will see what has, what has done to the economies of this nation as against uh, the economies of nations that don't have broadband. Now look at Kenya, look at what broadband is doing in Kenya, in South Africa, and even in Ghana. The, in fact, it's been stated by the, the World Economic Index that there's a correlation between the higher broadband speeds and economic development and human capital development as well. So broadband is pretty very important to um, the, the economy and the human capital development of any given nation. Especially, uh, it's, it's a tool now to, to, for, global, for globalization. It's a tool now for education. It's a tool for medicine. It's a tool for, for telecommuting. It's a tool for the new workforce. And of course, it's a tool for new companies and new products that, that will come up. I think you should start by explaining the difference between internet connection or internet access and broadband access. Okay, so the, the internet, um, the World Wide Web, where you go to your, your www.gmail.com and, and the rest of them, um, is completely different from the, the tool, the mechanism that you used to get there. So you could get on the internet in a two, on a 2G phone as an example or a fiber optic enabled device. Now, the difference between that is that a 2G network will only give you access to um, so much in terms of web pages and all that. But broadband access gives you access to not just the internet, but also solutions. So you talk, you're talking of cloud services, you're talking of internet of things, you're talking of um, telemedicine. Imagine, as an example, um, someone doing surgery in, in Nigeria, and the doctor is in India, and using laser, laser equipment controlled and connected over broadband. You can't do that over the internet, because the speeds you need and the capacity for data that you need to control that is much, much larger. So broadband, fiber optics, Wi-Fi, um, and then 4G, as, as they call it, are broadband-related, uh, broadband technologies. However, um, 2G networks, um, coaxial, some kind of coaxial cable, are internet-related technologies. They really don't offer much other than access to information. But access to innovation is done only over broadband. The, the Nigerian Commission Commission a few months ago announced that we have crossed the 30-35% um, broadband penetration mark. Um, from your perspective and experience, how true is that? I, I actually have no access to how they come about their their figures, but I doubt those figures really very much. If we have 35% penetration, broadband penetration, you will have, you'll see the, the corresponding um, effects on the economy. But more importantly, it, it is the quality that we have that's even the question. So you, you could have broadband enabled systems or companies that are doing broadband access. But is the quality, the output of these companies, is it really broadband? Can we say it is broadband? By, de by definition, the United States defines broadband as any device that does 4 megabits uh, per second uplink and 25 megabits per, uh, per second downlink. That's broadband. Do we have that in Nigeria? That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> so that's broadband by, by, by the FCC standards. So if the FCC is saying 35% broadband penetration, are they talking in terms of the number of devices sold or in terms of the quality of, of what you get from those devices? So let's talk about infrastructures that you mentioned. Um, a few months ago, we heard about some names being touted as infrastructures for the east, for the north. But since then, nothing seemed to be happening. What do you think is a challenge? Infrastructure is a huge challenge, right? Um, power, electricity is, is one huge challenge. How do you power your base stations? Um, when we say infrastructure, we're talking about access to take the upstream providers. We need to get them inland. Now, that's some network of, of, um, of fiber optics or some kind of technology that would take them inland. Now, it, it, it's more like putting the cart before the horse for most of them because you bring this on the sea cables here and the next question is, how do you get it through the market? So what I would have done is to create that, kind, that demand locally, first of all, 
and then bring the under sea cable to plug in into locally existing demand. But n n now we're here. So infrastructure in, in, in terms of fiber optic access is a problem. And, and that brings me to the question of what the NCC is doing about the infra code licenses that's supposed to ensure that this eases the burden of the current infrastructure. There's been a lot of work with state government to ease the issues of um, right of way and access to fiber. That's, a lot of work has been done there, especially with the previous, the previous administration. Uh, I've not seen so much done with this administration as far as com tel uh, telecoms is concerned, but th that, that much work has been done. So the next phase is democratizing fiber, fiber optic ac access. And the, the, the foundation has been laid, the groundwork has been laid, the policy groundwork has been laid. Execution is the next thing. We've not seen that in years, and that's a drawback. So which is part of the challenge of taking broadband to the rural areas in particular? What is the solution? There, there are two sides. There's a social side to it, and there's a commercial side to it. The social side, you can't just put broadband in every single rural community. But they have town halls, right? They have places where they meet. They have, um, they have schools. They have public places where you could put some kind of broadband access. I know the NCC had tried some things like that in the past. But of course, corruption, and nepotism, and things like that messed up quite a number of these um, good initiatives. The, the, the ISAB um, network, the network to also connect all Nigerian universities, all of these things are, uh, because Nigerian universities, in, in, incidentally, most of them are in rural communities, if you look at it. So if you ensure that universities are connected, you're not just only helping academics, you're ensuring that the surrounding rural community Will there be off-takers there? That, that's, that's the social side to it. The commercial side to it is to look at services that require broadband access in the rural communities. So as long as we continue to code in English and think that English is a value, is, is a measure of intelligence and value, we'll begin to miss it. 5G is available at the moment now. Nigeria is still grappling with 4G. Would you recommend we latch onto the 5G train? No, I, I don't think so. I, so when we say 5G, it, it has been within the context of the technology and who is marketing it. So when we say 4G, we're talking about the long-term evolution of the CDMA variant. So there are marketing bodies behind all of this technology. Wi-Fi, on the other hand, is in its sixth generation, right? So we've had the first generation, the second generation, the third, the fifth generation. Now we have the sixth generation of Wi-Fi, which is developed and fully better than what we call 5G. In fact, in, in places like New York, there's 450 megabits of Wi-Fi access everywhere. Just walk around. So when we say 5G, it has to be in the context of those who are marketing. So I really wouldn't um, give them any, any, any time because it's a, it's a marketing gimmick. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Wish you all the very best. Thank you for the privilege of having me here once again. Best. I'll always be available. That was one day Adalemo, founder Atmosphere, who's of opinion that a lot needs to be done to improve access across the country. Students, startups, and innovation hubs would mention poor or slow internet service as a major challenge, and in many cases, pretty expensive. Nigeria already has a well thought through broadband policy, and what is required is implementation so that hopefully there will be high speed internet across the country. This is something authorities should work to achieve come 2020 if we must remain a competitive nation. That's our show for today. Please follow us on social media and don't forget you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via cfablog.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukomeka Agbata.